Hello and welcome to the Apostolic Resource Center. This is Lisa Annabelli coming to you live this morning. Well, it's live where I am. I don't know when you're watching it, if it'll be live. So I just wanted to come to you this morning because I have been doing my prayer time this morning and the Lord spoke to me very clearly to the point where literally I had tears in my eyes and I had to go in the bathroom and wash my face before coming down here to do this video because there is something he just spoke to me that I believe we need to hear as the body of Christ and I think you're going to really agree with and like this word even though it's going to be I don't even know how to say it it may be hard to do you know a lot of times God will speak to us and it's it's so simple when he speaks it and yet it's so hard to do it's like we 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 hear um we hear something and it just sounds so easy like just go on a diet and lose weight well that sounds super easy like just give up sugar okay that sounds really easy but it's actually very difficult to do and so i was praying today's august 1st i'm going to date myself on this video but um today is august 1st and i was praying psalm 61 this morning and as i began to pray it the the presence of god began to descend and and literally um when the presence of God comes, it always comes to soften us. And that's why I love the presence of God. And that's how you know people that have been in the presence of God, because there's a softening that takes place. Religion is singing songs, but never entering, entering into worship. Religion is hearing the word of God, but never doing anything with what you've heard. And, and a lot of times religious actually, religion actually hardens us and the presence of God softens us. It causes us to have a tenderness. It causes us to have a mercy. It causes us to have a softness that we wouldn't necessarily have if we weren't in the presence of God. And so it's really easy to sing songs and keep your walls up. It's really easy to hear sermons and never have it renew or transform your mind. It's really easy to shout amen, but never have anything change in your heart. That's why Isaiah says in Isaiah 6, when, when the Lord commissioned him and he said, go to a people that are ever hearing, but never understanding, that are ever seeing, but are never coming to the knowledge of the truth. It's because religion allows us to hear and see, but nothing ever changes in us. And so this morning I was praying Psalm 61, and this is what it says. Let me just start at verse one. It says, hear my cry, O God, give heed to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a refuge for me, a tower of strength against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. When I read those first four verses, and then it says Selah. When I read those first four verses of, Isaiah, of Psalm 61, the Lord began to reveal to me the difference between the wall of protection versus the tent of protection and he said many believers are dwelling in a walled city and I'm inviting them into a tent and the tent or the tabernacle or the shelter of his wings are soft places so think of camping think of a tent it's just fabric the tabernacle in the wilderness that the Israelites dwelled in, remember they dwelled in tents in the wilderness. They were just, and here I'll use this, fabric. This is fabric on the table. It's a tablecloth on the table at which I'm sitting. And it was just a veil. It was just a tabernacle. It was just a tent. It was just a piece of fabric that separated Israel from the elements all around them. You have to think of modern day camping. We are not in a walled city in the presence of God. We are in a tabernacle. We are in a tent. We are called to be tent dwellers. We are called to be tabernacle abiders. 
But the Lord spoke to me and tears began to fall down my face because he is inviting again his people to dwell in tents, to dwell in the tabernacle, to, to not dwell in the brick and mortar of a walled city for protection. Many of us live behind walls of protection daily, hourly, minutely, because we're trying to self-protect. Self-protection is a walled city. And that's where many believers are dwelling, behind walled cities. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, the invitation is to the dwelling in a tent, dwelling in a tabernacle, not in a walled self-protected city. And he said, if you want to know what's happening to the walled cities, ask Jericho. <laughs> in Joshua chapter six, Joshua and the army of Israel that had just crossed over into the promised land after dwelling in tents in the wilderness were abiding in the shelter of the Most High and they were told to walk around a walled city and their only weapons were not swords, were not spears. They were only weapon they had was their voice because they were dwelling in tabernacles, they were dwelling in tent. My friends, we've come a long way from the wilderness. We are no longer dwelling in tents. We are no longer dwelling in tabernacles. We are back into dwelling in brick and mortar. We are back into dwelling in walled cities in our hearts. We are back to self-protection. And that is why our services have become religious. That's why our churches are filled with religion. Because we are not dwelling in tabernacles. We are not dwelling in, in, in tents any longer. We are not dwelling in places, thin places with God. And there, therefore, we're singing songs, but we're not entering into worship. Therefore, we're reading the word of God, but we're not getting a spirit of wisdom and revelation. My friends, we have to repent of self-reliance. We have to allow the, the presence of God to come in and heal those places inside of us that hurt so deeply, that have caused us to erect a wall that, 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 uh, that doesn't... Our sound is not being heard because we are living behind walled cities and we're afraid. Remember what it says about the people of Jericho in Joshua 6 and 7. It says that they were afraid of the Israelites because they had heard what God did for them in the wilderness, providing manna in the desert, defeating their enemies. We have heard the news reports and we've gone into walled cities. We've gone into self-protection. We've gone into prepper mode. We've gone into hoarding rather than generosity. These are all evidence of people that have lived, that are living in a walled city and they call themselves believers. Believers in what? Not the report of the Lord. They are believers in the report of the media. And maybe you are a believer that is believing in the report of the media that's, that's crying wolf, that's declaring nuclear war, that's declaring World War III, that's declaring you're not safe, that's declaring that um, we need to hoard and protect and buy all this, this food and water and, and prepare because we're going to have to hunker down and bunker down. That is living in a walled city of self-protection. They're trying to say that that's wisdom. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is to let your walls down. Wisdom is to live in a tent. It says, Lead, let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Psalm 91 says, 
though a thousand fall at my right and 10,000 at my left, it shall not come near my dwelling. Why? Because David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging bread. My friends, don't forget the wilderness even as you live in the promised land or you're going to end up in Jericho. And the walls of Jericho are coming down and Jericho is about to be plundered. But we have to be the people that are tent dwellers. We have to be the tabernacle people. We have to be the tabernacle company. We have to be the ones that are not trying to rely on self-reliance by building brick and mortar. But rather we must be the ones that dwell in the tents that worship. Remember Joshua lingered in the tent long after Moses left. And now Joshua, the tent dweller, the tent lingerer, is leading us in the promised land. The ark is in front of us. We've never gone this way before. We cannot be the people that are trying to, to self-rely because it's making us religious in the land of milk and honey. We do not want to make religious our promised land. Do not bring religion into the promised land because it will not work for you. Come out of her, my people, and dwell in the tabernacle of the Lord. You must get into the presence of God if you don't trust people and you can't get into his presence in the corporate body. Get into his presence alone. Let the presence of God wash over you in the secret place that you dwell with him alone. And, and heed the word of the God. Hear, heed the word of God. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. The presence of God is a safe place. The presence of God is a tent. It's a tabernacle. It's a dwelling place where you remain soft. How can you remain soft? Because you know full well that Lord Sabaoth, God of angel armies is surrounding you. When I am surrounded, I am surrounded by you. The Lord Sabaoth, the angel armies are surrounding you. That's why you can dwell in the tent of the Most High. That's why you can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You don't need to live in fear of death, destruction, disease, lack, or any financial distress. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You dwell in the land of abundance. You dwell in the land of milk and honey. You dwell in the, in the shelter, in the wings, in the, in the place of God Almighty. In the peace and in the shalom, for God is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not outside of you. He's in you, the hope of glory. You are the tabernacle of God. You are the dwelling place of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. My friends, have no fear. Get back into the tabernacle. Get back into the tent. Get back into the thin place. This is just a veil. Look at it. It's just fabric. It's thin it's not the thick walls of self-protection. It's not the brick and mortar that you see behind me. It is the secret place of the Most High. You are safe in the secret place of the Most High. Now dwell there. The presence of God will come in worship. It will come in the Word. It will cause you to come alive. And you will have nothing to fear. Do not forsake the dwelling place in order to create a brick and mortar place that makes you feel secure. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, dwell in the tabernacle, dwell in the tent. It's the safe place. If you want to know, ask Jericho. All right, my friends, I love you so much. I bless you. I pray you have a great week and a great weekend. You need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. My name is Lisa Annabelli. I'm the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. Thank you for listening. I hope that this word blesses you.
because the Lord is inviting you back into the tabernacle. Have a great day.